in this unit we are going to move on to reaction stoichiometry and this is the first law which you already probably know about it is the law of conservation of mass and what does the law state it simply states that for any ordinary chemical reaction the mass is neither created nor it is destroyed that means it is the mass remains the same or mass is conserved how do we use this in chemical reaction here is an example of a reaction and we have been given the masses of two reactant and product two compounds so the given is 500 grams for NaN3 NA and then we have for nitrogen it is 323.20 grams so we don't know how much is sodium which let's say it is X according to our law when we add the masses for these two that must be equal to the mass before we did the reaction so now it's simple algebra and you can find out X will be 500 minus 323.20 which I believe comes out to be 176.8 grams okay moving on to reaction stoichiometry and how it leads to something which we call as percent yield but before that uh, let's find out what do we mean by theoretical yield and actual yield in theory we should be getting 100 percent yield it doesn't happen there are always some drawbacks we all are humans we do mistakes and actual yield is most of the time different it's sometimes less or sometimes if there are impurities it can be more also so it can be both a less or more than the actual yield now how do you find out the theoretical yield for that we use stoichiometry and these are the steps we first write the balance reaction and look at that it says there map out a game plan we'll talk about that uh, in a minute and then of course it's simple calculation so let's move on to our first problem all right this is a simple road map which you already talked about in early unit and that is a road map which always go through mole and if we can go from moles to particles or moles to mass and we can use molar mass or we can use the magic number which is Avogadro's number okay. this is a simple problem in which it is a synthesis reaction producing sodium chloride and the reactants are chloride and sodium so our first step is to get a balance reaction let's get the balance reaction and that comes out to be 2Na and 2NaCl now let's write down the given under each of the chemical so what we know is 30 grams of chlorine gas is something we are beginning with and then it is reacting with excess solid sodium but we have to find out how many grams of sodium chloride could be obtained so your roadmap begins from grams of chlorine and ends up with grams of sodium chloride now you have to keep in mind any time when we go from reactants to products or products to reactant side there will be always a bridge and then that bridge is always called as a mole bridge so you need to go from grams to moles of chlorine and then we go to moles of sodium chloride and then we go to grams so let's write down all this into our grid and let's see what we get so that is beginning 30.00 grams of I'm sorry chlorine and then we are going to go to moles of chlorine then we go to moles of NaCl and then we go to grams of NaCl so you know now the drill we need to have grams of chlorine here we need to get moles of Cl2 and here moles of NaCl 
Whenever we get ratio of moles to gram, it is mole and it is the molar mass for chlorine. Remember the diatomic, so we get 70.90. We end up getting this answer by multiplying the atomic mass of chlorine times 2 because it is Cl2. Then it's mole to mole ratio. That ratio will be always from the ratio of moles which we obtain from a balanced chemical reaction. So we have for sodium chloride the coefficient is 2 so we get that coefficient 2 here and for chlorine it is 1 so we get mole to mole ratio as 2 to 1. And again now it's grams to moles for sodium chloride. So we have 1 mole of sodium chloride and over here it is the molar mass of sodium chloride so we get 58.44 grams when we solve the problem and we end up getting the answer in sodium chloride the final answer is 49.46 grams of NaCl so that was easy right let's move on to our next problem in next problem, let's write the reaction first and quickly you can figure out there is bromine and there is lithium iodide. So the reaction takes place between these two and then we have to figure out the products ourselves. As you can tell, this is a single replacement. So what we get is lithium bromide, LiBr and iodine as I2. Alright, where is the beginning point? The beginning point is 45.70 grams of lithium iodide. And what is the end point? End point is grams of bromine. So we need to go to grams of bromine here. That means our roadmap goes from lithium iodide to bromine. Remember again, we need to go to the bridge and bridge always needs to go to moles. So, when we put that all in this format, we have 45.70 grams to moles of lithium iodide. It's always important to write down which chemical you are working with. So, it will be easier for you to find out the molar mass of that compound. So it's moles of now. Now we go from bridge moles to lithium iodide to moles of bromine. So there we go. And then last one is uh, grams of bromine. And then let's complete the calculation part here. And the last one here is moles of bromine. Okay moles is 1 and lithium iodide is 133.84 that's the molar mass remember what we get in when it's grams is the molar mass actually this is the mole ratio and for a bromine when it's balanced oops we did not actually balance that so let's balance that first so the balancing will be 2 LiI and that will be 2 here so when we end up balancing we get lithium iodide 2 and then for bromine it is 1 so there you go 1 and 2 and then back to bromine molar mass for bromine is again remember it's diatomic so it will be times 2 the atomic mass times 2 and we get 159.8 okay the units are cancelled and then we multiply the numerator part then multiply the denominator part and actually you can divide and the final answer for all of this comes out to be 27.28 grams of bromine. Okay, let's do one more problem. Okay, in this problem it is hydrogen gas reacting with nitrogen forming ammonia NH3. Let's balance our reaction and as you know this is odd number so we need to make that even first of all. So we need to get 3H2, this will be 1 and this will be 2. We are good. 
Let's see what's given to us. It's 0.334 grams of nitrogen. And our journey begins from here. And the end point is how many molecules of hydrogen. So we're going to go to hydrogen. But look carefully. We are looking for molecules. Molecules of hydrogen. That means it's actually asking us for particles. So, let's begin again our grams of N2. That's the beginning point, 0.34. Then we move on to moles. That's our bridge. So, moles of N2. We go from there to moles of hydrogen. And now, look carefully. We are going to go to particles or molecules of hydrogen. So, here comes grams of N2. This is moles of N2. Just keep in mind, diagonally across, we need to start putting those units. And then mole to mass ratio is always mole is number one. This is diatomic, so it will be two times the atomic mass of nitrogen which is 28.02 moles of hydrogen is 3 moles of nitrogen is 1 and this is moles to particles and particles is always that magic number 6.02 to 10 to the 23rd and then your job is to multiply all the numbers and your final answer is going to be the particles or molecules of hydrogen which of course I am going to give right now it is 2.15 times 10 to the 22nd so many molecules or particles of hydrogen so look at this you already learned how to get from reactants to products or from one reactant to other reactant or from basically any chemical to any other chemical in a balanced reaction. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in next video. Bye.